Hello there. In today's video, we're going to be talking about setting up your uh, your form templates in MailChimp. MailChimp is a great email marketing system to use. It has um, a, a great free level as well as really affordable prices. So if you're just getting started and the budget doesn't really um, the budget really isn't there for larger uh, for a, a more expensive program, then MailChimp is a great place to start and it is very user friendly. Um, so what we're going to do, let's jump in. When you log into your account, you would go down here to lists and you'll see all the lists that you created. Um, I have a bunch, you may only have one or none depending on where you are in your um, in your use with MailChimp. Um, but for whatever list you have, we're going to go over here to the side and you're going to go down to sign up forms. And we're going to go to general forms. And with uh, general forms, you'll s there's a whole bunch of different types of forms that you can customize. So as you'll see, we've got sign up forms, and thank you pages, opt ins, unsubscribes, all that kind of stuff. Um, but what we're going to work on now is creating a general sort of template for all these forms so that they will all kind of look the same. Um, and this is a great place to put your branding, um, any, your logos, your colors, any of that kind of stuff that you're using for your website into here. Um, so that if somebody comes directly to one of your forms or you know they see them online um, however they've gotten to them it doesn't look foreign it doesn't look different it's it looks like you it looks like your website your business your brand so we're going to come down here um, we're not going to pay too much attention to the build it just yet first i'm going to actually go over to the design it and design it is going to let us change how the the form looks visually so the page refers to this whole thing the whole um the whole body of this, like if this was um, a website page, then think of it that way and not necessarily like this isn't your newsletter template that we're talking about. This isn't what somebody's going to see in their email. This is a web page. So I'm going to first thing I'm going to do is take the background to white. Um, so you can just put in a pound sign and six F's, or you can come over here into the little corner and make sure that you have um, white, white. All F's is white. Um, so that gives us a nice white background page or page background. I'm also going to get rid of this border. I don't want this border around the center part here. Uh, it makes it, I just don't like the way that looks. So I'm going to go ahead and just change the border size to zero. You can leave the rest of this alone. It doesn't matter what color you've set the border to because if the border size is zero, there is no border. Next, we're going to move on to the body. And the body is this center part here. So I'm going to again leave the background white. I don't really want to change it. The padding is how much space between the edge of this, between the edge of the body and where the content is. I'm going to actually go ahead and take that down to zero because it doesn't matter to me if there's any space because I don't have a border. There's no visible border so it's just going to line up with the header here. Okay, so default text is well, it's all of your text. So what size should it be? I'm going to actually bump it up to 16. Let's make it nice and big, nice and easy to read. Arial's fine. Arial's a very common web font. Um, all of these are very common web fonts. You want to stay away from Comic Sans. Lots of people think it looks really cool, um, but it's kind of become overused and has um, bad, it just, it, it's just not, um, a very professional looking font. Uh, Verdana is a good, another good one. If you don't want to use Arial, if Arial is a little too boring for you, uh, Trebuchet is good. But really, any of these are fine. So just pick one that you you like and go with it. Um, the line spacing. Let's go with you know one and a half. I recommend to leave some more spacing in between the lines. Makes it easier to read. You can go and go to double if you want it to be even wider or even taller. That's fine and then pick a color. Now as you'll see here, this is um, this is all threes. This is a very dark gray. This is not a complete black. Um, you could pick it, you could change it to something else. You could make it navy blue, you could make it purple, uh, whatever color you want. I'm going to go back to my dark gray. I like my dark gray. And then this is the color for your links. What color do you want your links to be? I want to go with kind of, uh, we'll say kind of this blue. I like that blue. Um, so there's not necessarily any links in here right now, but you may add links. You can always add links into this area where you can add a custom message. 
Um, so you want to make sure that you can pick a color for that so that it's all set. Okay, next step is the header, and that's this gray box here. So the first thing we want to do is make it not this funky gray box. Let's pick a nice background color for it. I like my blues, can you tell? There we go. Um, again, padding is how much space between the edges of the box and the text. Here we definitely do want to have padding because if I made this no padding, then the text would be right over um, against the side of the box and that just looks weird. So 20 is good. I do not want a bottom border. You could add a bottom border. You could make it a really big bottom border, um, have a nice chunky line. Um, you can do some other things. There's dashed, there's dotted, um, you know, there's some different options here, but I don't want a border, so I'm going to just take that out. Okay, and then we're going to go over here to the top bar text. What do we want this to say? By default, it's going to be, I'm sorry, this isn't what we want it to say. This is how we want it to look. So the, the dark gray on the blue is kind of hard to read, so I'm going to go ahead and take my text up to white give it some better contrast. You can set the font, you can set um, the, the alignment, the font size, all that sort of stuff here. Okay, so we're doing pretty good. Let's go over to alerts and errors. I'm going to go ahead and leave the alerts to show up red and I like the big font size that'll make it easy for them to see. Cool. Um, same thing with errors. Let's make those a little bit bigger. And the errors will be if um, somebody doesn't fill in a field that's required or they don't enter um, a, something in a valid email address format. Monkey rewards. If you have a free account, you are going to have the monkey awards uh, graphic on your page. There's nothing you can do about it. That's just a caveat of having the free account. Um, if you don't have a free account and you I would still recommend keeping the Monkey Rewards badge there because it also becomes an affiliate link. So if somebody signs up through your link, you get credit for it. And you can earn, I believe, don't quote me on this, I'm not sure, double check the information on the MailChimp website, but I believe you can earn like free months of service and stuff like that if you're using a paid account. So I like the little postage stamp one, but there are different options you can use. You can try this little guy, uh, different color variations, the monkey, that kind of thing. I actually I'm going to change it to this blue-green one. I like that. And we'll leave it center, but you can also say if you want it to the left or to the right. All right, so that's all our design stuff. So now we have this template here. The build it part, if you go back to build it, this is where we can customize what fields you want to have in here. As you see, this is all kind of blocked out. Um, this is something that I use for tagging people in the background. Um, so I can sort the list by uh, how different ways that they came to be sub subscribed to my list. But this here, as you can see, it says that it's a hidden field. So this field doesn't actually show on the form. I have it there for um, other places that I use the form. So, but it won't be visible if people are just coming to this form by the URL. So we're going to go up here. We're going to edit this. And instead of saying general list, you can say welcome to my list or welcome to my newsletter, or something like that, you could add a picture. Uh, let's see, what images do I already have uploaded? Let's go with my, I have lots of pictures, but I don't see the one I want to use. Right, we'll just grab this one for now. This is one I used for uh, an anniversary for a giveaway event that I did last year. So we can put that there. You can make that, um, that header link to your website, which I recommend because if somebody clicks on it, then they can go to your website. But I'm going to make it open in a new window so that they don't come off of the form. And let's make that centered. Okay, so now if we come back and we take a look at it, this is what it looks like. If you're going to use an image and you want it to span the whole width of this box, and go back into the design it, um, go to the header and then top bar and get rid of the padding. And that way, 
the whole width of that box becomes the, the picture. Okay, so let's take a look at what this looks like. I'm going to go ahead and copy my URL here. Let's look at it. Okay, so this is what we've just created. This is a form that somebody could directly go to to sign up for my mailing list. I can add a little welcome message here. Thanks for Sorry for the dead air. I find that when I try to type and talk, I mess up one or the other. So I'm just going to do it like this. Okay. And I'm also going to add a picture in here because I have an image of my signature that I use, of my name that I use on my newsletters. But I don't want it to be quite that big, so let's take it down a little. And we'll insert, and there we go. So now let's refresh this list. And there's my little welcome message, my signature, and then they can sign in. Um, as you see, there's lots of other information that you can collect from them here, too, if you wanted to collect their birthday or their website, all that kind of stuff. They can fill that in. Um, so that's So now that we've got that set, Let's look now at how it has affected some of our other forms. So if we just go here, let's go take a look at what the thank you page is, looks like. And as you can see, it's got the, the same branding, the same style, the same template that we've set up. It's got the white background and the header image and the text and all that stuff. Um, this is what they would get. This page is what they would get uh, after they've so filled out the form. And this is the one that says, okay, but we just need you to confirm to, you know, confirm that you actually wanted to subscribe to this. And then another one would be, so this is their opt-in confirmation email. This is an email that they would get. They would get this little box here to click on it to subscribe to their list. Confirmation page. You've been signed up. Um, if you have a freebie giveaway that you want people to get when they've signed up for your form, you could enter that text into here um, and say, you know, here's the freebie. Here's the free report that I promised you. Um, you could put that in there and the link and the pictures and all that sort of stuff. And then you also have um, some unsubscribe options. So if they want to unsubscribe from your list, there's a form for that that looks a lot like your subscribe form. Um, success, okay, great, you're unsuc you've unsubscribed, we won't bother you anymore. Um, do you want to tell us why you unsubscribed? The unsubscribe reason form. And there's a goodbye email. This is the email that they will receive uh, when they unsubscribe. And then there's some other forms here too. So, but they should all have this basic, um, this basic layout and stuff. So then if you want to change the content for the individual forms, you would just go in and edit those. When you are setting up a new list, I highly recommend that you go through and make sure all these subscribe forms are filled out. Um, have content on them uh, and, you know, sign yourself up and see what kind of, what the forms look like, what the pages look like that you go to, what the emails look like that you get. Make sure that you're happy with what they look like and what they say. Um, and then there's also an option, instead of going to the MailChimp default uh, thank you page where they have the confirmation, you could also have a page on your own site where that has this information that says, you know, please confirm your email address and stuff, but have it on your own site. And that you would put the URL for that page in here. Same with the confirmation thank you page, you would have um, the URL up there. So that is playing with forms in MailChimp. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below, and I look forward to hearing from you. Bye!